I want to put something out there uh, when it comes to um, bigotry and lack of understanding and all around bad attitude. Yesterday, uh, as we all know, it was my birthday. I'm 45 years old. Yay me. <laughs> Another five years, I'll be 50. Anyway, um, I'm coming at you uh, from a different side. Um, I was down at the fringe trying to exercise my communication skills and uh, socialization. And um, I was at this booth where they were offering a kind of uh, thing for the guys as to what it's like to be harassed on the street if you're a woman. Well, I was there and I asked them a whole bunch of questions and I gave them an idea. How about going into workplaces and uh, making it so that people have to live with an invisible disability or any disability in general for a day and see the results fly? They thought that was a good idea. Mind you, I was in the middle of talking to this to these guys. And, um, well, this guy in a white tank top, about five foot nine, 180 pounds, maybe 200, about 45 Caucasian. And he, we started talking and he started asking some personal questions. Well, me being honest, no filter, blah, blah, blah. Um, he asked if I had ever been divorced. I said yes, twice. Both of them has, both of them uh, with alcohol and abuse related issues, plus as well as verbal, mental, and physical um, abuse, and hence why they're divorced. <laughs> anyway, um, the guy asked me, do you take responsibility for your actions? Well, yeah, I do. And that is why I'm doing this video, because the next question of his, well, let's just say, let's cut to the chase. He basically asked me, did I do something to make them want to hit me or abuse me in any given way? Well, here's the thing. There is no excuse good enough for someone to hit you. There is no excuse for someone to verbally abuse you such as what this guy was doing to me. There is no excuse for mental abuse of any kind, be it work or through friendships or any other relationship. Yes, there's always going to be the little people out there that think it's okay to treat people less than dirt. But Here's the thing coming from someone who has been through such issues. Number one, I'm not the kind of woman that will take it and accept it. As a matter of fact, I am going to tear several strips out of you before I'm done. And then I'm going to call security if I'm at a venue and explain things in the best way I know how and get you removed from sight. Because your little ego and attitude is what drove me to be pissed off to begin with. Little man in the white tank top, or I should say muscle shirt, that thought it was okay to be a jerk. Yes? I said some choice things. I called you a bigot. I called you a sexist pig, because that's exactly what you are. And as for anyone that attacks women in the slightest, in any given way, and if you are male, yeah, you are a sexist goddamn pig. As for the rest of you that are in relationships and you're getting abused in any given way and your needs are not being met and... It seems to be all one-sided. If you tried everything in the gambit from counseling to whatever, guess what? Only you can fix you and whatever situation you're in. I know it's a tough pill to swallow and it's a hard thing to hear. But your friends care about you. So does your family. And they will do anything to help you. 
but you have to be ready and willing to accept the help that they're willing to offer. If you have tried absolutely everything in the world, just understand this. You're not the only one that went through bad relationships. And hate to say this, it probably won't be your last. Because you're going to run across bigots every day of your life. You're going to run across the bullies, whether you're a child or an adult. There's an idiot in every crowd and you can't fix stupid. Only you can fix you and only you can be proud of you and only you can fix your situation, whatever it is. You are better than what that person is saying to you to make them feel better than you. And you deserve as much respect, dignity, and self-worth as anyone. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Because they're the weak ones. That's pretty much it. Now, I've got several people in my life that have helped me along the way. When I had no choice but to jump ship because my relationship was far from what I needed. These are people that came into my life and I greatly thank them for it. One of them would be Angie Smith, one of my best friends in Lethbridge. Another would be my mother, a person I adore. Without these people in my life, back in the day when I made mistakes in relationships and judgments when it came to people, it was these people that came to my aid. I greatly thank them for it. The people that I have in my life today, such as Kevin, my mom's husband, JD, my husband, these people, are my are, are part of my support system. And same with Norma. And I thank them all dearly for being a part of my life and trying to understand me, even though I might be hard on them sometimes. But I also make their lives and their friendships very interesting. And when you have a disability, it's some days it's hard and it's rough, but if you're any bit friend, especially to me, I thank you for being a part of my life. And I love you as if chances are you're, if you're blood, you are family, but I love you for who you are and I'm glad to have you in my life and thank you for being there for me. Without these people being in my life as my social network and my support system, I would still have trouble. Without these people in my life, they're a part of my strength. They're a part of my drive for doing self-advocacy work and helping my friends who have similar issues to me. And I really hope that I gain more friends in my life. And recently I've come across Gonda and Dane, also very special and wonderful people. Friends, if they're in your life, should not feel obligated to be there. 
They should want to be there because they like you. No matter your idiosyncrasies, no matter your downfalls or your imperfections. It is these people that will understand you and they will stick by you no matter the circumstance. Those are the relationships that are two-sided. A little give, a little take. A little push and a little shove. They teach you as you teach them. And perhaps one day you'll find someone that is worth your time relationship-wise to spend the rest of your life with as I have. The husband I have now, God, I put him through so much. But I also try my best to be the best wife that I can within my abilities. I love my husband. I love you, JD. Thank you. And mom, thank you for being tough as nails on me when I was a kid. Because I wouldn't be where I am without you. Thank you. Angie, not only are you the best worker in the whole entire world, but you are also one of my best friends. And I hope that whatever comes down your path, both in life or work, the wonderful person that you are, I hope that there's only one thing that I wish for you, that you'll learn to keep in contact with your friends because those are the ones that are loyal. You are my sister, you're my friend. And I thank every day that I, I was welcomed into your life. Thank you. Now as for those little people, the abusers and the what have you, the ones that like to make others feel less than. I'm sorry, but I have no use for you. Your bigotry, your stupidity, your lack of education, your simple mindedness isn't worth my time or my comment because I'm better than that. But I can say this. The ones you hurt, I hate to say this, abuse lasts for life and unfortunate. The ones you hurt, even though they don't mean to drag their crap and their baggage because of you into other relationships which could damn them for life. For any other relationship because the one you love ends up bearing your bullshit. What you do to that person that you so-called a wife or your child or your friend, stop. You are no better than anyone else. And it's time to change your damn attitude. That person that's in your life that supports you or that you gave birth to or helped give birth to takes two to tango or that you call a friend should not be made to feel smaller. They should not be your slave. They should not be used. They are there because they want to be, because they want to support you. Maybe you should turn the table and support them. As far as I'm concerned, you don't deserve to be that person's friend, lover, wife, or have a child nonetheless. And you are the one that's lower than dirt, Mr. 
or Mrs. Abuser. You don't deserve to have a friend. That's all I have to say. I hope all of you have a nice day and learn something from this because if you choose to hurt someone, remember your words can damage a child or anyone for life if done for over long periods of time. What you do to the one you supposedly love have damaging effects that affects people in everything they do from socializing to gaining new relationships. Whether that person seeks counseling, they will never be fully over it. Because of my abusers, yeah, I may be a survivor. Yeah, I may have gone through some counseling, but I still carry that baggage and I wish I didn't. And I know I hurt my husband from time to time because of it. And in a way, I hurt myself at the same time. It's not fun. I don't know if you abusers feel good about yourselves when you make someone feel less and know that what you do can last a person's life. It's wrong. It is so wrong on so many levels. You don't deserve to have a wife if you treat her like shit. You don't deserve to have a husband if you treat him like shit. And no one should have to suffer your insecurities. You only abuse people because you want to make yourself feel better than others. Newsflash. When you point three fingers, when you point a finger, you're always pointing three back at yourself. So basically, whatever you call that person or whatever you do to that person, I'm sorry, you're just basically mirroring imaging yourself and describing yourself. Perhaps even if you physically hurt somebody, you wish somebody had physically hurt you. It's not right. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. And those that are getting abused, you deserve better. The one you're with or the one that you call friend or whatever, they're not with your time. You can love until you're blue in the face, but I'm sorry, tigers don't change their stripes overnight. And the one that you're with that is hurting you isn't going to change. And you can't change them. Anyway, I hope someone learns something from this. And uh, perhaps maybe an abuser or two might see this and want to change their ways before they go and hurt somebody else. Thanks.